Hello everyone, my name is Soren Iverson and I'm a product designer currently working at Cash App. Today, I'm going to walk through how to use the corner radius, independent corner, and corner smoothing tools in Figma. The difference between corner radius and smoothing is subtle, but it's an important part of digital product design. Let's dive in. You're likely somewhat familiar with corner radius. This tool is used to round edges of frames, shapes, cards, buttons, and other elements within Figma. When you select an object, at the top right of the screen beneath the coordinates and size of the selected layer, you will see a rounded 90 degree angle icon, like this. When you hover over it, it will say corner radius. To change the corner radius, you can either click on any corner and drag to adjust to your liking, or you can go to the control panel and type the desired amount of corner radius that you want to add. Sometimes, you will only want to round one corner or a couple of the corners of any given shape. This is when you would want to use the independent corners tool. To the right of the corner radius field, you will see a rounded rectangle that's split into four sections. If you hover over this, it will say independent corners. By clicking on this, a series of new fields will appear where you can individually adjust the top left top right, bottom right, or bottom left corner rounding of a shape. This gives you a lot of flexibility to customize individual corner roundings to your liking. You can see if I select this shape, I've selected independent corners. Let's say I want to make the top left and the bottom right 100 pixels. I can round each of those respectively while keeping the others sharp. In addition to rounding corners, you can apply what is called corner smoothing to an object. This visual adjustment is subtle, but it allows you to create shapes like a squircle. Corner smoothing takes a rounded shape and extends the curve to make it continuous. You can see this by clicking on the same icon that opens independent corners and then clicking on the ellipsis. This will open a new window that says corner smoothing where you can click and drag to adjust from zero to 100%. First, let's take this shape. We'll set the corner rounding to 100, but then we'll open the corner smoothing and you'll see a very slight difference if I drag this to 100. Corner smoothing is hard to see unless you are really zoomed into an image. Look at these two shapes side by side. The one on the left does not have corner smoothing, while the one on the right does. I've added rulers to the top and bottom of these shapes so that you can see how corner smoothing extends the curve of the right shape. If we zoom in here, you can see there's a subtle difference between how the rounding meets this line versus on this side. This is a subtle nuance that can be difficult to see if you're not paying attention to it. A good example of when corner smoothing is used in the wild is in app icons or the avatar images that were used in the early version of the Clubhouse app. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now understand the difference between corner radius, corner smoothing, and independent corners, and that you feel comfortable using these in your designs moving forward. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support means a lot. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.